Hey, how are you? It's Teddy from Don's Insiders. Good, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, we, I figured maybe we start this out. I'll ask you a couple questions about your career. Uh, San Diego's a team this season, and then maybe about your future, if that's all right with you. Yeah, sounds good to me. All right, uh, so first, why did you decide to transfer in the first place, and what was it about San Diego that enticed you? Um, well, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, okay, perfect. I just put on some headphones. All right, great. Um, so I decided to transfer because um, I felt like there was better competition out there for me, and I really wanted to challenge myself and, you know, get to a better league. And um, I felt the coaches at San Diego would do a great job of demanding a lot out of me mm-hmm. and pushing me to be the best player that I can be. Mm-hmm. And did San Diego meet your expectations? Yeah, definitely, you know. Um, I mean, I think you can see it in uh, my growth as a player from Portland State from, I think it was like 12-5 and five to my first year at San Diego. I was 15-6, and six, and then this past year I was almost 20-10 and 10 at 19-9, and nine, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think them pushing me, um, to be the best player that I could be, and then also allowing me to um, grow into that player. Mm-hmm. And a lot of our followers and Don's fans, they've they've wondered why you didn't try to go to a high major school, as a lot of people think you do have NBA ability. Was there ever a thought to transfer out of San Diego and play a year at a high major school? Um, there was a thought at one point, but... I mean, I committed to San Diego, and, you know, I felt like the league was going to be really good this year. I Mm -hmm. felt um, I was set up to have a really good year. Um, We played a lot of high majors in our preseason, Mm -hmm. so I felt like I was able to show my ability to play at that level, and I was just committed to San Diego. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what was the highlight of your career at San Diego these two years? Oh, man, there's a lot. Um, if you had to pick I think, one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the relationships that I've built with the coaches and the players, I mean, I'm going to keep those forever. And then um, just the experience, really, of everything, of living in San Diego to going to this beautiful campus and then, I mean, having a great college career Mm -hmm. uh yeah so now into this season your team with you with isaiah wright olin carter you guys were predicted by a lot of people to finish maybe top three top four you came in seventh place in the regular season Uh, i asked olin this as well but do you think it was the injuries that really caused this um i mean it's hard to say that because you know injuries are always a part of sport Mm -hmm. but um, I do think it, injuries did play a part in it when you have three starters get injured for extended period of time throughout the year. And what really hurt was Squirrel got hurt. And then right after when he came back, Isaiah Wright got hurt. Mm-hmm. And then when he came back, Owen Carter got hurt. Yeah. And so when we finally did have a full squad, it was, it took us an adjustment period, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, um, So it was hard. We were in a constant state of adjustment periods um, because those are three really big parts of the team. And then I think when it came down to uh, that last USF game and then the conference tournament, you know, we just really, that was the team that we could have been if we were fully healthy. Yeah, uh, and that was the next thing I was going to ask you about. That game in San Francisco, you guys were basically out of it and then couple big shots, Isaiah Wright hit a three, Olin hit that buzzer beater, and then you put up all nine of your team's points in overtime. Do you think that was the game that turned around your team and, and brought you guys to the position to end up being in the NIT? Um, yeah, definitely. You know, that game right there just showed the resilience that we have, but also that, you know, it, was, it wasn't on one person's shoulders to get us back in that game, you know, and so that was the beauty of having four seniors, but Also, we, I mean, that was a really good comeback win for us. And so Mm -hmm. that just propelled us into the conference tournament, which I think was a really big reason why we got 
um, that NIT bid. Mm -hmm. And in the conference tournament, what was it that gave you guys the will to come back those first, uh, or actually really just dominate those first couple of games? And then BYU, you guys were up by 44, I think, at one point. It was just an unbelievable performance. (laughs) Thank you. No, yeah, it was just, you know, we knew that um, this was close to the end of the road for us. You know, if we didn't give it our all and play for each other, that it was going to be over. So, um everything was behind us, you know, didn't matter about the preseason or the injuries or conference. Um, you know, we had to take it one game at a time, but we were, we just didn't really want to stop playing for each other. You know, we were having such a good time and all the memories, we didn't want that to end. Mm -hmm. And you get to selection Sunday. Again, I, I asked Olin about this too, but it seems like a lot of people weren't even watching the selection show. Uh, what what was what was that day like for you? Were you even watching? Did you think there was any chance you'd make the NIT? Um, so at first, after the conference tournament, we had pretty high hopes. You know, we heard that we were we had a good chance at making it. And then as the days went on, it was looking towards like we saw a couple polls. Oh, we only have like a two percent chance of making it and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so. As the days went on leading to Sunday, we, um, I didn't think we were going to make it, you know. Uh, obviously, I hoped we would, but um, I didn't think we were going to make it, and so I fully thought our season was over. And the selection show was actually on, what, ESPNU, I think? Yeah, yeah. And so I don't get that channel, so I was kept looking at my phone, and I was actually at the dog park when I got the text from uh, one of my teammates. He FaceTimed me, and... He told me we were in, and so it was crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then after the NIT, you lost that game against Memphis. You end up going to 3x3U. Uh, did you expect the WCC to play so well in that game? I know you guys weren't able to come out on top, but you went a long way. Yeah. Um, honestly, I wasn't sure. I knew we had shooters. Um, I mean, all four of us could shoot the ball, and so I wasn't sure how to expect or what to expect with the play style of 3x3U. Um, but you need shooters in that game. And so it really played um, a big part into it that we all three can shoot and that we were all unselfish. And so um, after the first game, I, I really thought, I was like, oh, okay, we're good. This this works to our advantage. We can go really far. And so it really took that first game. Mm-hmm. All right. So I got two questions from our followers now and then one final question. The first one, the first one is about your kind of the deep breath you take on the free throw line. (laughs) Uh, How did that come to be? And what does that do for you on the free throw line? Um, Okay, so it came to be in high school. I would, you know, do my routine, but then I would just shoot it really fast. And my coach would always say, no, slow down, relax, take a deep breath and so this year, um, at the beginning of the year, I would catch myself speeding up at the free throw line. And so um, I just remembered that. And um, it was probably a really long breath now that I look at it. But um, it just calmed me down to, you know, knock down the free throw and also mm-hmm. gave me an extra second to catch my breath from the game. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, and. Next question, uh, February 2nd, I think it was, against Gonzaga. You mm-hmm. scored 30 points in that game. Did you feel some competition against Rui trying to prove yourself in a game against a guy who's going to be a lottery pick? Um, n- yeah. No, I didn't feel competition. Like, I had to go out and, you know, it was me against him. But I definitely knew that the defensive scheme that they were going to be sagging off. And so it was possible for me to have a really good game. Um, and then I was made some shots and then the hoop got big for me. All right. Uh, and last question, what are your plans for the future? Are you planning to play overseas or try to make the NBA? Uh, yeah, definitely. So, um, my whole goal right now is to make the NBA, Mm -hmm. um, I think first steps is get a couple NBA workouts and then hopefully get invited to summer league and prove myself there and um, go from there. But definitely 
NBA is my first shot. And then if that doesn't fall through, um, then I know I'll be able to have a really good career overseas too as a backup plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it sounds good. Thanks so much for talking to me. We really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Good luck trying to make the NBA. (laughs) Thank you.